Alright folks, rod's out. I went ahead and cut it off uh, on the piston end and cut the threads for it. Yeah, put a wheel chalk here. And uh, so them threads are done. Now I've just got to turn it down and thread it. Now I machined it off here and as you can see I bored the inside of it because this was press fit on and I couldn't get it to budge. And I don't have a regular press so I didn't want to beat up stuff hammering it so I just machined the inside of it out and that thinned that wall up really good I don't know if you can see it or not that thinned that wall up really good so I was able to go ahead and get it pressed out and that way I can still get my size well I can get my size off my piston anyway but so we've got to shorten this rod up and uh, we'll shorten it up and then uh, uh, we'll thread it or turn it down and then thread it now chucking this in the three jaw chuck I've got a piece of copper that I've been wrapping around it and then chucking to that and you just got to be careful when you cut your threads you don't want to cut too deep because you don't want it to spin and or move because uh, you're not getting the grip strength that you would if you was gripping straight to it and um, anyway so we'll get on it get her done all right folks here we go uh, both rods are made uh, finished uh, this one come out really good shouldn't have any issues with it uh, we'll get it where we need to get it and uh, I'm not gonna worry about this it's pitted uh, it'll still hold on everything I don't think it'll be too bad uh, we can always make one later if we need to but uh, it's just a square with a hole in the end uh, I believe it's about an inch and a half by inch and a half pretty big but anyway it's not any big issue uh, if I don't like it I'll just work with it later it'll hold oil like that with all them pits but uh so anyway threading's done on this uh, then uh, one inch eight so we have got to heat this because it's a sweat fit and if I was a single man or if I wanted to become a single man I'd do that in my oven in the in the house but uh, I don't want to do that so I don't think I will uh, rings will be here tomorrow and it says they'll be here it's Saturday so he had them in stock so uh, shouldn't take too long besides I've got to machine the uh, surface for the slide valve if I can get that done uh, get everything surfaced up now we're not restoring this you know like you see uh, some of the other people do you know where they completely redo everything rebab it you know clean up all that we're, we're repairing uh, this thing has lasted you know a hundred years uh, we're just going to go ahead and get it together where we can run it ourselves and you know last another hundred and uh, somebody else can mess with it later but uh, yeah they're they're well built very very well built all right folks I figured we kill two birds with one stone I need to preheat that piston so we're going to do it in this boiler and then uh, we're also going to get to run this and check it out hope that it does good like I said I know I gotta work on this stone but I think we can handle it so all right Put some water in it now. Yeah. Pull it down a little bit. It's not running too fast, but we can run a little slower. She's been doing a good job. Can be perfect for that. We've got to find something to sharpen now, all right? You see we're only running 25 pounds, all right? All right, folks, we've got water in it now. It's working good. The stone is not as off as I thought it was. I thought it'd be even worse than it is, but we're still going to try to get it faced a little bit. But uh, it's doing good. You can hear a little bit of a noise. i got two different belts on here, and i got to twist it, so you're hearing the belts hit each other. But I can live with that. And, uh, still need to run my exhaust out and all that good stuff, but we're getting there. Working good though, hold water. Uh, still fix the water up, but it is a wet time, so it's made for it. Alright, I'm going to get that piston in the boiler there and get it heated up. Alright. 
All right, folks, I just put water in the boiler. I had, it was up to 60 pounds. And when I put the water in, of course, it cooled it off a little bit. But, you know, we're just gaining pressure from that 20, uh, even with it running. So this is half the size of what this boiler was made to run, or actually a little less than half. It's a horse and a half instead of a four. So uh, anyway, I got our piston in there. We're going to pull it out. Put it down and then try to push the rod down through it. I think it'll if we get it hot enough. It should go pretty easy. So we'll have that ready. Uh, I like this thing. Minna seems to like it. Minna, you like it? Minna, you like it? It's like laying in that cold water. It, uh, noises and you know stuff like this don't scare her too bad. Well, yeah. Let's see if this is gonna work out. Cross your fingers. I just sharpened my axe up, so uh, I still be using it as a hammer anyway. Alright. Got our rod here. Lay it down. Don't know how, how hot it is, but it is hot enough to got our wire off. Alright, we can fight it out of there. That's okay. Yeah. That's it. She's definitely a sweat fit. When that thing cools, it's not coming off. We're still going to put a nut on There you go. Alright, now to give you an idea how hot that was, look what it's done to our shaft. It's done turned it purple. So, this thing was definitely, definitely hot. Alright, we're just going to let her sit. I'm not going to cool it with water or anything. I'll just let it, let it sit right there and cool down all the time. Cast iron, we don't need to crack it. Alright, all right, folks. Excuse my mess, I've been machining them pieces for the cordless also, but here's what we've got. Uh, I don't have any kind of a cutter to go in there besides an end mill. And because it's got to go down and below, below them castings sticking out right there. And uh, that way it will uh, surface. i got to clean it up a little bit. We'll go ahead and get her done. Alright folks, a little stormy here. I know I'm going to hear it from everybody for not cleaning this thing up first, but... You know, it don't matter as long as you get it clean. So I'm going to clean it up after. Uh, we've got it surfaced. I've got this surfaced. So let me show you. Okay, on the surface grinder, you can see there's some spots in it, but I don't think they're going to affect anything. You really can't. You can see them, but you really can't feel them. Uh, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to build something uh, somehow to lap this in. So we need to move about three inches back and forth and then we're going to take some valve grinding compound and, and let this thing lap for half a day or so and we'll get this thing to where it works really good. We'll mark which side's the top, that way we don't have to worry about getting it in backwards after we lap it. Okay, uh, ran into this. I thought I broke it, but after looking at it, the shiny part is actually graphite from the rope seal and they had it just all packed in there so uh, excuse the lightning thunder there uh, or the thunder so originally I was just going to make the light on originally I was just going to make uh, the entire piece and I got to thinking about it if I cut this off straight and I just make this piece here with the taper inside it's going to work the same way It'll just be two pieces and it'll push against it, the, the inner piece. So there's no reason to have to make the whole thing. We'll just get it machined off good and flat and straight. And then I'll turn out a new piece on the lathe. And that way we'll put it in the hole first and then this goes in. So all it does is, you know, it, it sort of compresses the packing and forces it against the rod. So, but like I said, this was already broken.
And this is exactly this is exactly how the packing came out of it, as you can see. So it had been broken for quite a while. So uh, we're going to take care of that problem. And that's a real simple, easy fix. Won't take long at all to machine that out. It's going to take longer to lap this in, but you know we got a range coming tomorrow, and uh, maybe if I can get it lapped and stuff. Uh, put it back together Sunday or Monday or something like that and uh, we'll try to get it together and we're going to run some run it over and hook some steam to it and because I want to run it on steam either way and we'll do some testing see if it'll run so uh, anyway I've got a lot of lapping to do there because it's not exactly perfect I had to mill these to get the cutter to get in close enough I ended up using this cutter right here and uh, because I, you know, it's all I had to mill with, so uh, it was shoot, got down low enough that I could get past it. So, but it's done. It's it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be fine. There's not going to be any issues with it. I'm sure. Run really good. If I had doubts, I wouldn't do it. All right. All right, folks. I've got my uh, sort of lapping machine set up. I used the motor off of my uh, bead roller that I'm that I. It's, hooked up. Uh, the sprocket on this was too big. Well, it wasn't too big. I just wanted to slow it down. Uh, it was bigger than I wanted, so I went ahead and welded that bolt to this sprocket because I got plenty of sprockets, but I got one smaller I'm going to put back on it when I get done here. And uh, this is just temporary to, to lap this valve. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to add a little stroke to it. I'll cut that bolt off and, and move it because I want, to, uh, I want to make sure that it's covering over top of the center exhaust, uh, both of them, which I think it is anyway, but we'll check it just to make sure. Now I've got this just sitting on it for weight. You put a little weight on it, I mean, it'll help it out a little bit, but this thing will probably run half the day tomorrow. I'll let it run and I'll continue to clean it and put a new valve lapping compound on it. Uh, and like I said, you can see the bowl, the center is loose in there. So it's just laying flat. So I mean, we're just, all we're doing is using this to move it back and forth. So uh, that's good. I pressure washed everything, cleaned it up. So we're gonna have to make the piece for the valve rod. Uh, and like I said, just hone it out, clean all the surfaces up. And then, uh, uh, let me see. Just start putting back together, I guess, if the rings come in. Like I said, they should be in the mall, but uh, our main thing is, is we want to get it lapped to where it runs as good as we can make it run. And uh, I think this will make a big difference. So, anyway, I might let this run a little while tonight because it's starting to get, well, it's pretty dark. but half dark now already, so. All right, so, oh, uh, Kenwood. That, if you look at the Sears and Roebuck advertisements, they said that, their, their engines was built by a company called Kenwood. Now, Kenwood, everybody knows them for their appliances and their radios. The radio company, I think, was a Japanese company. The appliances was a British company. Uh, I can't remember what year, 40-something, 40 47 maybe, I don't remember. But anyway, uh, long before that, the only reference I found to a Kenwood company was Kenwood Supply Company. And that was out of Chicago, Illinois. And they, I guess, another company with a lot of uh, problems. And I think there was a lot of gangster uh, stuff going on in, in Chicago. Probably still is, but uh, the name was Packer Swift. Uh, was the guy's name that owned stock in that company and the Kenwood Supply Company. But I've seen advertisements listed for... Uh, uh, the supply company, I don't know what they sold, if they sold meats or what they sold, but that's the only reference to a Kenwood I could find. So I don't think that there was a company named Kenwood that made them. Uh, I think that uh, Sears Roebuck and Company was probably a lot like uh, the uh, Packer Swift dude, uh, which Packer Swift, believe it or not, I've seen where that company stayed in business at least until 2007 and sold out to a company, I think it was in South America.
so uh, it was that was the name of Packer Swift. But the guy, it was Meat Packers, but the guy's last name was Swift. But anyway, we'll never know for sure. I don't think, but uh, I, I, in my opinion, I think that these engines were made by all different manufacturers, and you know that's why there's no names on them. Uh, you know, manufacturers. I didn't understand back in the mid 1800s and all they didn't put names on them, but once they got up in later, if they didn't put names, they at least put casting numbers you could identify them. I think a lot of these are unidentifiable because Sears didn't want them to be identified. So, uh, why or what their advantage was for that, I don't know, but that's what they've done. All right, appreciate everybody watching. Till next time, bye.